And three years ago, I was teaching school in Melbourne, a school mom. And here I am today, responsible for 7,000 people in seven camps. Good morning. Excuse me, please. Thank you. Good morning. But what is it? Come and see me about it, yes. I'm sorry, not just at the moment. Later. Excuse me, please. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Carling. Good morning, Miss Hill. Ah, the mail. It, in just a moment, Mr. Conan. No, not that yeah, one. Uh, Miss Parling. Uh, Miss Parling. Officer, Miss uh, Robertson. Yes, all here. right. Here's a new list of names from a settlement. Uh, the call has not arrived yes. on delivery. Yes, come already. along, Mr. Conan. Now, please. All right. The problems and troubles of 7,000 people, day after day, year after year. People like Miss Parling, the schoolteacher from Melbourne, worked in the camps all over Germany and Austria and came to love these people. People like little Colin, the camp engineer, an architect in his own country, now a refugee. And Mulewski, the camp policeman, three years in a concentration camp, then a leader in the Polish underground, now a refugee. So many of them, so many fine people stuck in the camps, even though thousands have been able to emigrate. And in every camp, a camp council elected by the people themselves to organize the education of the children, the running of the hospitals, the distribution of food and labor, and the 101 other things necessary in a community. And Mike got a job working in the camp, an assistant engineer. And the boy Ladu learned carpentry in the camp workshop. And in the technical classes, refugee teachers and experts passed on their knowledge to the children so that they would have a better chance to emigrate and start life in a new country. To get ahead. To get ahead. Now everybody, now say, to get abroad. Where is Mr. Jones? He is in the billiard room. What is he doing? He is talking to the butler. For his work as an engineer, Mike received less than two pounds a week after he'd paid for his rations and a room in the camp for his family. Two pounds. And from this amount, he made a contribution to the General Welfare Fund. So life went on for three years. Three years of recovery, of building up, of regained strength and dignity and hope. busy to prepare. The food of the pecans is not so wonderful for a feast, but we are accustomed to do well with few things, and it is possible now, with little money, to buy extra for the great occasion. Thank you. For us, the peace, Christmas is very much. We forget our little troubles and remember we are people with great tradition of our homeland. So a 
at Christmas Eve is solemn the moment when all make prayer to God. Help our people at home to have courage until our country is again free. And in each room in our camp is one father, one host for the family. With bread and honey and the kiss of peace, he gives greeting to each one, making stronger the friendship. has no memory of Christmas at home, only in the pea camp. But so, in this way, we teach her the customs of our land. so splendid this party in honor of the Christ, his birthday, but we do our best. Three candles for the Trinity, resting on the bread, the same as we have done at home. Twelve dishes for twelve disciples of our Lord. again. Then one morning a new fear came into the camps. News from Geneva. No more money for the refugee organization. All camps must be closed down. The people must emigrate or get out. The pastor stood among his people that morning and wondered what would happen to those who had nowhere to go. The sick, the old, the undecided. 